Hey guys, welcome to TechAbility. I am Berge. We are your source for no-nonsense tech. Thank you guys for watching. Um, if you already haven't, subscribe to the channel. Check us out on all the great social networks. All right, let's get straight to the point here. That is our moniker, straight to the point, no-nonsense tech. What we have here is a Samsung Galaxy S5, the white model, 16 gigabyte for T-Mobile. All right, so this is the just released Samsung Galaxy S5. You can see that there's no carrier branding, but it is the T-Mobile model. Uh, and we'll get into that in a bit. But I wanted to go ahead and just do the full review of this phone, get it out of the way so that we could do some awesome comparisons between this and a flurry of other devices. So let's just get started here with these specs. All right. You have the Galaxy S5, which is rocking a 5.1 inch Super AMOLED 1080p display, rendering roughly about 432 pixels per inch. Uh, it's got Corning Gorilla Glass 3. Uh, it has a gorgeous display, no doubt about it. Good in viewing angles, definitely very bright. Uh, you know, I was in a movie theater yesterday watching Noah, and this phone was just super bright, and I was literally at about 50%. I think that's what we're at now, about 50%. You can see if I ramp it up to 100, it's super duper bright. It's a very bright screen. Of course, that's what you're going to get with Super AMOLED. So, given the fact that it's 1080p, given the fact that it's um, Gorilla Glass 3, it's responsive, it's fast, it looks good, and we have no complaints in relation to the screen. Uh, you also have a quad-core Snapdragon 801 2.5 gigahertz processor with Adreno 330 GPU, two gigabytes of RAM, expandable storage, a 2800 milliamp battery. You got a 16 megapixel rear camera with a flash. Uh, you also have the front-facing camera, which is two megapixels. You have the proximity sensors. Of course, you have the home button, multitasking key, and the back key. Okay, on this side you have the power button. Down below you have the charger, also doubles up as a micro USB charging port. Over here you have the volume rockers. Up top you have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as the IR blaster for remote control and whatnot. The microphones and all that good stuff. And again going back to the rear of the device, you can see now it has like a matte like finish and this is the white one. Uh, you have the Galaxy S5 logo on the bottom, the Samsung logo right up top. You have the speaker right here. It feels good. It's got a matte finish. It's definitely not as, you know, I don't want to say cheap, but it's not the, the same, you know, it's not as plasticky as the Galaxy S4 or the Galaxy S3. Uh, so it does feel good. It's almost got that Note 3 like fall leather feel, but it's soft. It's, um, it's, a de it's a different finish. It feels good in the hand. The phone is definitely a bit wider too than the Galaxy S4, even though the Galaxy S4 is a 5 inch phone. This is a 5.1, but it's a little bit wider. So uh, it, it's got a good feel. Okay, now in terms of just the overall design of the device, it's 8.1 millimeters, so it's fairly thin. It's a little bit thicker than the S4 but not by much. Uh, of course you have the plastic uh, size right here, the bezel if you want to call it that. Uh, it's different, again it's, it's similar to the Note 3. Uh, it's got The ridges are a bit thicker than what you get with the Note 3. Feels good in the hand, it really does. And the bezel does pop out here on the front and of course you, again you have the display. Now there is more bezel here in terms of the white that's going around the screen up top and bottom than the Galaxy S4. Uh, now at first glance you might think, well wait a second, it looks like it almost looks like there's more bezel than the Galaxy S4, and it, it, there, there is, you know, especially considering the size over here. But the phone has so many features, heart monitor, uh, fingerprint scanner, that there's a reason why they've added a little bit more bezel. And nonetheless, it's still a gorgeous device to hold in your hand. Definitely feels like a mini Note 3. It's got a nice curvature up top and on the bottom. And again, just going through the device here side by, or, or through, through the device via the sides and the back and the front, you could see it's a gorgeous device. Uh, it definitely, again, feels good in the hands um, and has that, you know, for whatever, for what it's worth, it does have that premium feel. Now, does it have as premium of a feel as, say, the HTC M8 or the LG G2, even for that matter? Uh, no, but it's lightweight, super light. I mean, this thing is super duper light, and it feels good in the hand, and really, that's that's what matters. Okay, now with all that said, uh, this this is Samsung's latest flagship. Okay, so this is their bread and butter right here. This is their Galaxy line. If you go all the way back to the original Galaxy S, you can see that their progression has been really quite phenomenal. From the Galaxy S to the Galaxy S2 to the Galaxy Note to the Galaxy Note 2, S3, S4, Note 3, and now the S5. And of course, down the line this year, you're going to get the Note 4. So their evolution has been quite phenomenal. Their sales have skyrocketed. They have become the um, worldwide leader in Android smartphones, right? I mean, they got TouchWiz UI on top of their on top of Android, and in the case of the Galaxy S5, you do have KitKat here, 
with uh, 4.4.2 running on latest TouchWiz UI. Now you can see the settings menu here is a bit different than what you may be used to with TouchWiz. So you can see you have these nice colorful circles over here. Uh, basically gives you all of the um, settings options scrolling from top to bottom and you could change this to list view if you want. You could just do list view. You still got those colorful icons on the left and you can see that it's basically similar to what you have with previous incarnations of TouchWiz except a little bit more colorful, a bit more vibrant and that's credit to the screen because the blacks on this screen are absolutely gorgeous and that's one thing that Super AMOLED has always been known for is the fact that the blacks are, are just so deep and so rich and the whole color scheme is deep and rich. It's like once you look at this screen and your eyes get accustomed to it <clears throat> it's really hard to look at another screen the same again. Um, but some people like LCD because it's a bit more natural uh, in terms of color saturation. All right, let's go back to grid view. You can see how that works here. You can also do edit quick settings. Okay. You get network connections, connect and share, sound and display, personalization, motion, user, and backup system, applications, etc. Okay, so if you go back to settings here, you can see all the settings as I just scroll all the way down. Wi-Fi download booster, you got this feature download booster, it says download large files faster by using the Wi-Fi and LTE networks at the same time. So you can enable download booster if you like. Of course, Bluetooth and all that good stuff, NFC. You got safety assistance, okay? And now you have this thing right here, which is the fingerprint scanner. Of course, Samsung added a fingerprint scanner, right? I mean, that has nothing to do with the fact that Apple did. Uh, nonetheless, um, it, they did add a fingerprint scanner. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how this works. So if I, got a, if I go to screen lock, click on fingerprint, you see, you see it says fingerprint lock turned on. So if I just lock the screen and unlock it here, all right, so it's going to give me this option right down below. There we go. Recognized. Okay, so I guess I have to flatten my thumb a bit. But, you know, once you get accustomed to it, uh, really it's, it works. Uh, it's just a lot of times it doesn't. If you watch other reviews, they'll tell you the same thing, that technically speaking, the fingerprint scanner could be a bit um, honed up, and I'm sure they will do that with future updates. You can see notification panel right here. That would be the quick settings. And again, the quick settings look different as well. you got these circles now as opposed to the uh, squares that you had with previous incarnations of TouchWiz. You also have the quick settings panel here or the toggles here on the notification. If you use two fingers, you could get the uh, uh, quick settings panel. If you use one finger, you get your notifications, which you could simply just swipe away. You could see you also have these features now, S Finder and Quick Connect, as well as the brightness toggle. Okay, so you can adjust this. You can also do brightness adjustment. If you turn that off, you see that the brightness adjustment toggle is gone. Recommended apps, set quick settings buttons. Going back here, all right, you got lock screen options as well, of course. Dual clock, screen lock, which we just set up with fingerprint. We can go ahead and change that. Let's go ahead and put in our password here, or my password. Thank you guys for watching Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. Uh, we got a lot of great comparison reviews coming up soon with this phone, the HTC M8, the 5S, Note 3, etc. So thank you guys for watching. Let's do swipe. Okay, you can do camera shortcut in the lock screen. You could do owner information if you want to do that help text. Let's turn that off. You could do unlocking effect as well. So we got popping color, stone skipping, watercolor, ripple. So if we do stone skipping, for example, you can see it looks a little bit different there. All right, so let's go ahead and put it back to popping colors. All right. And the sounds change as well when you change the uh, lock screen effect. LG has that on their phones as well. So you have power saving mode, Wi-Fi, download booster again, tethering of course if you have tethering on your network, location, NFC, all that good stuff, printing, screen mirroring, uh, sound and display. Of course you have display options which you can also do increased touch sensitivity. So if you're wearing gloves for example, uh, it makes the screen slightly more responsive to your touch. You have smart stay, which stays as long as as long as you are looking at it, which you can see it says that right there on the option, LED indicator lights, touch key light duration. So all those features are there. If you're familiar with TouchWiz, then you're familiar with those features. If not, you have to get accustomed to the fact that Samsung adds a ton, an array of different settings and features to their device. So you have to keep that in mind. Multi-window as well. And you can access all these features right here in the quick settings panel. So you don't necessarily have to go to settings. And you can see if we turn on uh, multi-window, it just basically pops up right here on the left. And again, this is a TouchWiz feature that has been around for quite a while. I can open the browser. I can open music, for example. And uh, you can see I'm basically multitasking. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, close out of that. Let's go ahead and expand on that. And we can just simply go home and close out of everything. Going back to the settings here. 
toolbox. You can see the toolbox right here now. Right, it says access your favorite applications with a feature quickly with toolbox. Floating shortcut menu will be shown. So if we turn that on, see the three buttons right there? There's your toolbox. And you can adjust these applications, edit them, put whatever apps it is you want. So this is true multitasking right here, guys, because you do have multi-window right here on the left. Okay, and you also have the toolbox. So I can open the camera, notes, a calculator. All right, there you go. Okay, now I want to go back and open notes. So I don't have to go home or anything like that. I could just click on the three dot menu on the toolbox and simply switch through apps. And again, you can customize that. And now going back to the um, multi-window, <clears throat> I can look at my apps right here. You can see it shows me my browsers. I could simply just close one out. I can, of course, adjust these apps right here on multi-window. All right, let's go back home. Let's go to settings. And it doesn't slow anything down. You guys could see now. All right, I have multitasking. I have, I have 2 gigs of RAM, 801, GPU, uh, 801 CPU, Snapdragon. You have an Adreno 330 GPU, so it hasn't slowed it down. Okay, so I, I have a flurry of a multitude of different multitasking applications or services present right now with the toolbox and with the multi-window. So it doesn't slow it down. You can see I could still pan through the screens, uh, pan through my... Uh, notification uh, or my app drawer go through each app right here simply qu uh, click on each app and it's fairly quick she's very quick I mean I must say it's it's a it's a super fast phone no doubt about it okay and again I have all my apps I just opened now if I want to go and multitask I simply click on the multitasking key now going to the keys here you can see that Samsung has adjusted these keys there's no more menu button you have back you have multitasking and you have the home button we'll get uh, to that in a second here let's just swipe them away one by one or of course you can just X them all out at once all right going back to settings let's go back to our toolbox here and let's disable the toolbox going back let's also disable multi-window Okay, one-handed operation. All right, you can see how one-handed operation works. It says adjust the screen size and layout for easy controlling of your device with one hand. So you can enable that if you want. Easy mode, accessibility, blocking mode. Okay, so turn off notifications for selected functions. Uh, you can enable blocking mode if that's what you want to do. Of course, the fingerprint scanner, private mode. All right, you can see they, they got these nice little splash screens for their specific Samsung apps. All right, and it says right here, private mode secures your personal content and keeps it hidden on your device. Okay, you got accounts, iCloud, or iCloud, accounts, cloud backup and reset. And you also have all the uh, regular system options such as language and input, date and time, battery, power saving if that's what you want to do, uh, storage, security, etc. Now going back to power saving, if we're going to uh, talk about battery life, battery life thus far has been pretty solid. It really depends on how you use your device. If you've got a lot of social networks, if you play um, extensive, you know, graphically extensive games, if you're streaming video, streaming music, okay, certainly your battery life isn't going to be as good as, say, if you don't do those things. But nonetheless, with a 2800 milliamp battery, uh, you will get solid battery life. I've, I've no complaints thus far. I mean, I carry a charger around me everywhere I go. I get a billion calls because I have a repair shop. So I do uh, carry a charger around with me because it's necessary for me. So battery life has been pretty good. Uh, is it comparable to say, I don't know, let's compare it to the Galaxy S4? Yeah, it's, it's right there, uh, right up there with the Galaxy S4. And of course, KitKat has had issues with 4.4.2 where battery life has drained a bit faster than it should. So with 4.4.3, uh, they are looking to alleviate that issue. Going to about device, you could see again, KitKat. All of KitKat's glory it speeds up the phone. It's definitely faster with KitKat. It's a bit more smooth. It will be more stable when 4.4.3 is updated. You got application manager, default applications. You can see you could change the defaults on your home screen, your messaging app, etc. Of course, you have the internet options, messages, gallery, and all that good stuff. All right, so let's go back here. Now we're done with settings. Okay, now if I was to just pinch into the screen, you can see what happens here. You get your home screens. You can add a home screen. You can remove a home screen. You got the variety of different wallpapers that they add, which I do wish they added some more wall high quality wallpapers. These are decent for what it's worth, but I feel like they could have added a few more high quality wallpapers. Um, you know, they're nice, no doubt, but they could be a bit nicer. That, that's just my personal opinion. All right, you can, of course, uh, go to home screen settings and enable my magazine adjust the transition effect so let's say we want to do card stack on transition so now you can see the transition effect on the home screen has changed and here's my magazine very similar to what HTC offers with blink feed on their sense UI so I don't want to set this up but you can see my magazine is available and you could just you know basically get away get away from it by panning to another screen or you could just simply pinch on your home screen go to home screen settings disable it go back to transition click on none and you're back to what it was. 
Okay, now if I pinch in again and I go to widgets, you can see the variety of different widgets here. Uh, you can see that there's multiple widgets for each specific, you know, widget that they have. So if I click on Play Store, it's going to open a little folder for me where I can add the widgets uh, to my home screen. Of course, you could just pan through by doing this. Um, a variety of different widgets, definitely, you know, T-Mobile widgets. Of course, because it's T-Mobile phone, you're going to get bloat, as they call it, but it's this, you could disable it. Just go into those T-Mobile apps or whatever carrier you're with, you're with and disable specific notifications. All right, Google Play Music. Again, you can add a widget, whatever you like to do. You get the weather widget and all that good stuff as well. So um, Samsung is definitely... Um, you know, they've loaded it up with a lot of their apps and features, but it's not as bloated as I thought it would be. I mean, you got a lot of Samsung features, but not that many. Uh, you have S Voice, of course, which I'm not really that big of a fan of S Voice. Or you can see it says perform tasks, yada, yada. I use Google now, it's just my cup of tea. You got a tutorial, start S Voice, exit out of here. Go back to S Health, which now has a heart rate monitor. Isn't that great, guys? You got a heart rate monitor on S Health. So you can see it's going to ask you to agree, sign in, you could skip that, you don't have to create an account. It's going to ask you to create a profile of your personal information. Go ahead and do that, click next, and you'll get all the cool S, uh, S Health features. Okay, now if you get Plur uh, Plurus Office, uh, you got Smart Remote, which again utilizes the IR Blaster. You can use this as a remote control, which is really cool, guys, if you're at a sports bar or a club or, 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 or any bar for that matter. <laughs> and you could just set up the remote to change the channel on the TV. People will trip out. They'll be like, okay, what the heck is going on? Uh, there's a ghost in the bar. No, it's just my phone. I'm using it as a remote. All right, you can see again the app drawer, very simple. It's a simple layout. If you click on the three dot, you can edit it. Okay, you can... Um, you can hide apps, you could disable apps, you got Galaxy Essentials, which if I click on Galaxy Essentials, it's going to ask you to agree, etc, etc, etc. Let's go ahead and accept, take you to a variety of different Samsung apps that you can install, uh, update and whatnot. Alright, going back here to the app drawer, if I click on the three dot again, again, like I said, you can hide apps, download apps, view ads, so you got a different view, you could do custom, alphabetical order. So, not too many apps. I mean, I'm surprised. Of course, Lookout Security, which I'm not, a, not the biggest fan of it, but I disable everything, so it's pretty much gone. I mean, you got Play Books, Play Newsstand, Play Games, all the Google stuff. But in terms of, like, what Samsung has to offer you, it's not as, you know, the Note 3 had a lot more. But the Note 3, a lot of those apps you still have to download. Uh, it's on the phone, but you got to download the, the, the specific, uh, uh, you got to download, like, specific apps separately so it's different it's a bit different but nonetheless uh, it's not that they haven't added too many apps here with TouchWiz on KitKat with the Samsung Galaxy S5 okay so let's go ahead and go back to the lock screen here and let me show you guys something with the lock screen of course you have the ability to access the notification bar and the quick settings panel you also have lock screen widgets you have uh, the ability to just unlock by swiping anywhere on the screen you also have the ability to access the camera which we're gonna get into in a minute now if I long press on the home button Okay, you can see I get Google now. All right, let's go ahead and just say yes, I'm in. Tell me the weather. It's 62 degrees and mostly. What is six times six minus three times nine to the second power? Six x six x nine to the second is two thousand nine hundred sixteen. Set reminder tomorrow, two p.m. Need to repair Galaxy S four. Who is the Prime Minister of Canada? Stephen Harper is the Prime Minister of Canada. How many dimes are in a dollar? Okay, so close enough. What is the definition of eccentric? Eccentric of a person or their behavior, unconventional and slightly strange. How old is Tom Cruise? Tom Cruise is 51 years old. You get the picture here, guys. And again, if I want to multitask, I could just do that. Swipe away, swipe them all away and close them all at once. If you long press on the multitasking button, you get this screen, which is basically the pinch-in screen. If you hold the back button, nothing happens. If you double tap on home, you get My Magazine. Or I believe you should get My Magazine. Yeah. 
Oh, no, it's S-Voice, excuse me, not my magazine. You get S-Voice. Swiping up, you don't get anything. So, um, very simple, very easy to use. It's actually very user-friendly. I'm quite, you know, surprised how user-friendly it is, considering TouchWiz, even though it is user-friendly and consumers love it, it's not as user-friendly as um, some other OSs on the market. All right, let's go ahead and look at a few other things here. So, you have the mobile hotspot app, of course. Let's go ahead and listen to how the audio sounds on this device. Now, the problem is, is that if you have the device flat on its back like this, it's going to muffle sound. Okay, so that is definitely going to be... It's, if, it's, if you're someone who puts their phone flat on its back, you're going to muffle the sound. So streaming audio. It's pretty loud. Okay, and you push to play this. You also could set up the widget. Let's go ahead and stop that. So audio is pretty loud. Uh, it gets muffled again if the phone is flat on its back, but nonetheless, it's not too bad. Let's go ahead and look at video quality here. Fantastic video quality. Oh my, this thing is so, I mean, in terms of just video quality, because it's super AMOLED and it's so bright and so vibrant, the video quality is absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and put this on HD here. Again, this sounds a bit muffled, right? See the volume options? If I lift it up, sound won't be muffled. forward, rewind, etc. Utilizing, let's say, gloves, you can enable touch sensitivity. Now, of course, you have the notification bar, which you can just swipe things away. You can see you have the toggles, the brightness, you have S Finder and Quick Connect right there as well. Um, of course, you can adjust uh, You can adjust this by basically going to the settings and removing or adding uh, whatever toggles it is. Now I can access my notification bar right here. Also, uh, remove the brightness adjustment. Go to multi-window. This has a ton of features. I mean, that's what Samsung goes for. Here's your multi-window right there. Uh, is they just add a ton of features. And I can add, say, the internet. Their UI, and that's okay. Because honestly, a lot of people are fans of that. You can browse I mean, the web while I'm watching YouTube, YouTube right here. Android consumer phone. Now, let me go back to the front buttons here. You can see the multitasking button. You can just swipe everything away or close everything all at once. Now, you have that home button as well, which has that round, more rounder feel than, let's say, the Galaxy S4 S3, which had a little bit more of a curvature to it. You have the back button, so you don't have a menu button. Swipe that away. Expand on my browser. Now I'm browsing the web with multi-window. If I disable multi-window, there you go, it's gone. Okay. Uh, of course, I could just go back to the browser here. Here's the WebKit browser that it comes with. Great pinch zoom, super smooth in terms of text. Pinch zoom, you can, of course, highlight text, um, define it, share it, copy it, etc. So let's go ahead and just scroll here and see how scrolling is. Okay, it's fast, Not no checkerboarding. Okay, a little bit of checkerboarding there, but nonetheless, it's super fast. All right, if I click on an article here, leaked iPhone 6 photos surface. Okay, you have the three dot menu, you can do home page, new window, incognito, brightness settings, reader mode right here. So here's reader mode, and I could pinch in and pinch out of reader mode. I could change the text size, make it smaller, make it uh, bigger. I can share it and all that good stuff. And third-party apps do sync here, of course. Going back from reader mode, see how the tabs look. All right, you can add a tab. You can also add an incognito tab if you want. You can see the quick access menu right there. You can adjust that. You also have the uh, options right down here with home, save, bookmark, etc. So going back here, and of course, you could just talk into it. See how ac accurate that is, actually. Technability.com. Yeah, texting ability. Okay. 
So in any case, the browser is solid. You can see how this works. Of course, if you auto-rotate, you do have access to the notification bar while you're in the browser, of course. You have Smart Stay and Smart Pause as well. So if you're watching a video, you could pause it with your eyes. Smart Stay, same situation. If you long press on it, you can see it takes you to the display option, Smart Screen. Uh, screen stays on as long as you're looking at it. You can turn that on, turn that off. Same with um, Smart Pause. If I long press on that, it says covering screen with hand, motion and gestures, turn device over, so a variety of different features here. It says use the following motions while the screen is on to mute incoming calls or alarms or pause media. So it gives you a variety of different options here with motion and gestures. I'm going to turn that off as well. Okay, so going back to the browser, actually going back to the quick settings here. Mm -hmm. Turn on screen rotation. If I rotate the screen here, see that rotates as well. So gorgeous display, so bright, so vibrant. Um, no doubt about it. Auto rotation. Super fast, right? Or fast enough at least. Okay. Let's go ahead and close out of the browser. And of course, if you're not a fan of Samsung's WebKit browser, you can always download Chrome. Okay, you can see how Chrome works. Very simple. If you're not familiar with it, it's a simple layout. Easy to use, also has reader mode, incognito mode, all that good stuff. And of course, you can see how their tabs work. And right, you can just swipe them away. So you have Chrome as well as an option. All right, let's go ahead and look at the contacts here and how that looks. Contacts layout. All right, you got that blue and white theme. Exit out. Let's go to the messaging app. Okay, so let's cancel that. Here's the messaging app. You can see you have the... Um, whatever latest text messages right up there select delete draft if you go to phone you could change the font size if you go to settings um, you got priority senders display text etc so you can you can um, change the way that it, the color scheme looks and all that good stuff okay so you can see how this works here unable to send messages of course because it's a t-mobile text if we add one you can see how it looks right here at priority senders you don't have gestures like you do in hangouts which if we go to Hangouts here, you can see it's gesture based. So I could just gesture back and get back to my text, et cetera, et cetera. All right, you have video chat as well, of course. Um, so the messaging app is nice if you want to utilize it. I like Hangouts personally. It's just my cup of tea, but that's just me. Go into Memos. You can see you could write a memo, save a memo, et cetera. You also have the widgets for this. Hey, okay. now let's go ahead and look at the keyboard here that Samsung comes with. All right, Samsung keyboard, which also does have swipe, so you can enable swipe. Hey. I'm not really good with this keyboard, obviously, you guys can see that, but it's a good keyboard, it's responsive, kind of gets slow, it slows down when you're sending long text or typing long text, but there we go, hey, how are you today, let's go hang pick, and of course you have the, hey, what's going on, what are you doing, do you feel like hanging out today, feel like doing something, maybe going to the beach, period. I don't know if I'm up for it because I have to review the Samsung Galaxy S4, exclamation mark. Oh, whoops, I mean the Galaxy S5. I'm stuck in 2013, period. So let's see how fast this thing could type as I'm talking. I don't know. Maybe it could type really fast, comma, maybe it can't. Looks like it stopped for a second there, but it does want to type what I'm saying because it types as I continue talking, period. Highlight. See, the great thing about this system is that it's one of a kind. You don't get this on any other platform. No other mobile platform types as you're talking. You have to talk, and then it types it out for you once you're done, which other platforms are quick when it does that. But this I like because you can actually see what you're typing. Now, of course, you could just click here, add category. Uh, you can add a picture if you want to do that. Insert image, take image. Let's go ahead and cancel this. All changes will be discarded. So, yes, let's go ahead and discard that. I'm um, going back to the dialer here, very simplistic dialer. Okay, so keypad. Easy to use, you know, bright, colorful, of course. When people call you, you can set up an image of that individual of your specific contact. Um, let's go ahead and check out S Voice here. Some people are curious about S Voice. You know, I'm not too big on it, to be honest with you guys, but let's just try it out here. Tell me the weather. See, it's just slow. Here is the weather for Glendale. Open settings. And navigation too has that same voice. Open settings. 
Okay, so it's an open settings for me. So S voice, you know, navigate to Pasadena, California. Navigating to Pasadena. You can see how the voice has changed. It's like I got two, two different people on my phone. All right, we're just going to go ahead and look at the music player here. You can see how this looks, tracks, albums. Okay, you can see their music player. You can also use Google Play Music if you want when you play a song. Share it, whatever you'd like. Fast forward, rewind. Of course, if the song's playing and you go to your lock screen, there it is. Should also be in your notification. Yep, you can X out of that. There you go. You can see Quick Connect right here. It says Open Quick Connect from any screen to view a list of nearby devices. All right, we're not going to set that up. You can also see S Finder, of course. So S Finder is you could just search for whatever you'd like with S Finder. Okay, so that's another search feature. Okay, you could see Varro's right here in the notification bar. Uh, when I'm on the phone with them, you could just take them off speaker. You could put them back on speaker, mute it, or end the call. Um, and you could see, obviously, there's that icon right there that you can hover around while you're in a call. And if I go to the lock screen here, it's uh, basically I can unlock. I can just simply go back to the notification bar and access uh, the uh, information of uh, Varro. You know, he's on the phone, so I can access him through the notification bar. All right, so let's go back uh, and look at the air view here. So you have a multitude of different air view options. Let's go ahead and demonstrate yeah. this here. Okay. So Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we're in the gallery, and you guys could see I'm hovering over the images, and I am basically, it's Ob I'm Obi-Wan Kenobi Now, this over camera here. is, no doubt about it, it's a gorgeous camera. You know, see the flash is on. It's a bright flash. Let's go ahead and actually take a look at how bright that flash is. It's super bright, right? Okay, let's go ahead and go to settings here, and you can see I could turn flash off, turn flash on, leave it on auto. You can see the multitude of different options here. Picture size, of course, you can adjust that, 12 megapixels, 16, which is the max. Picture stabilization, face detection, audio zoom, video size, etc. HDR mode, review pictures on off. So you have a multitude of different options here with the camera. Of course, you can just take a picture, very easy. See how quick that is. You do have burst, mo burst shot as well, which you could set up. All right, now if I go to uh, this right here, it's going to switch me over to my front-facing camera. Hey there, hey there, smile. Okay. You have beauty face on and all that. So that's the modes are right here. You can see auto, beauty face, shot and more, panorama, virtual tour, dual camera. Let's go ahead and click on dual camera here. Right, you can see how dual camera looks, of course. And you can switch the dual camera. And you can make this bigger, make it smaller, whatever you want to do. Move it around. Okay. Let's go back to mode here, virtual tour. It says to start taking a virtual tour, place the target pointer in the center of the circle. So you have this virtual tour option, which is cool. All right, you can see you got to place it in, you gotta, excuse me, sorry about that, guys. you got to place it in the center and then get started on that. Panorama, shot in more beauty face, auto, which just takes auto pictures. And zoom, when you crop in 100%, it's like the quality doesn't get affected at all. It's just so gorgeous. 16 megapixels, guys, that's what you're going to get. So multitude of different options here with the camera. Let me go ahead and show you guys some of the pictures I've taken, some of the video. All right, so this is just a picture I just took, not great, you know, representation. Of course, that was at 100% zoom. There's the multi-picture. Okay, you can see how many I took. <laughs> All right, here, I took this video earlier today outside. This is the full 1080p video. Shooting 1080p video here with the Samsung Galaxy S5. It's a gloomy day outside here in Los Angeles. The chapter preview, listen via Bluetooth, okay, subtitles. Let's test out this camera here. Zooming in. It's 100%. You can see we run fits. Great, the frame rates are fantastic. Going back here. See how the gallery looks. Okay, this is just if you're panning through pictures. All right, so very simplistic, easy to use. So let's say I want to share a picture. I can click right there. I could share it. Of course, sharing options do sync via third-party apps. All right, so third-party apps. Excuse me, third-party apps do sync here with the sharing options. All right, you also have the ability to edit it. So if we go to um, edit, we should be able to go to edit. Actually, let's just go to. Let me go ahead and take a look at a picture that I thought was actually really nice that I took of the HTC M8. 
All right, thank you guys for watching Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. All right, there's the HTC M8. Great quality, man. This thing, just the colors just pop right out at you. So if I go to edit here, you can see their editing options. Processes the picture. You can auto-enhance it by just clicking on enhance. You got adjustment levels, crop resize rotate. You could adjust the tone, color, color temperature, hue. You got effect options, which are basically filters. All right, you could just close out of that. Stardust, you know, which acts adds like a lens flare type deal. Light flare, another lens flare, down light, blue wash, etc. All right, you got soft glow. So if we go back here, you got portrait options as well. Removing red eye decoration. You can add text, another image. You can label it, put a sticker. And then, of course, you just click on the save button and you save it. You just go back here. You could discard it if you don't want to save it. And if we go back, you can see how the gallery looks. You got time right up here. Album, event, people, scenery, documents. So let's just click on album. You're going to see all of my various albums. You got screenshots, of course. Screenshots are simple. You just hold down power and home. You got downloads. You got camera. There's all your camera. Very similar to whatever, you know, if you're used to TouchWiz, you're used to Galaxy S, this is exactly how it is. And if you click on the three dot, you could select multiple pictures to share, etc. And, and do whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, so if I go back again, see how the pictures look, the zoom, super fast, super smooth, panning through them. Okay, just pinch in, pinch out. So the gallery is nice, it's easy to use, it's simple, it's got a good layout in my opinion. Uh, you also have the ability to go on documents here, you can see that. So it's, it, you know, the, again, the, the quality of the camera in my opinion is fantastic. And of course Samsung has been known to obviously create a great experience when it comes to their camera, so this is no exception. Alright, let's go ahead and just take a flash image here of the couch. Alright, let's go ahead and look at that. You can, I just want to show you guys just how bright and detail-oriented that this camera is, especially on flash. You can see 100% zoom here. It's so detailed. I mean, it's so absolutely gorgeous. I'm a big fan of this camera. <clears throat> okay, so going back here, going back again. Going back to the gallery, you can adjust your gallery, you can edit your gallery, content to display, so you can hide stuff if you want to do that, include Facebook, Dropbox. You have Studio, so if I go to Studio here, you got uh, Get Creative with Pictures and Videos, Photo Studio, call, Collage Studio, Shots and More Video Clip Studio, so if I click on Photo Studio, okay, here you go, adjusted by time, so I want to click on that, and it takes me back to the editing option, so everything's right there. It's easy to use. Everything's synced with everything. It's actually quite intuitive. It works well. I'm a fan. Um, so I do think that they've done a good job integrating all of their TouchWiz features into Android and basically making it a super unique experience. All right, so whatever happened to Quadrant? And of course, this always happens with T-Mobile's network. The LTE is pretty fast. It's, it's, it's actually just as fast as what you would get with any other LTE network uh, for T-Mobile if you have LTE in your area. See screenshots obviously shows you a um, preview of your screenshot right there. This is a truly in-depth review of this phone, guys. So thank you guys for watching. Um, let's look at a game here while Quadrant is supposedly downloading. Okay, let's close out of everything here. Go back to the Play Store. Go back to Quadrant. It's not wanting to download it. Let's go ahead and take a look at a game here. Quality of games is good. And we're going to look at NBA 2K14. Just do a quick game here. I was going to make this a two-part review, but realistically, just make it one part. Miami versus San Antonio. Great graphics, great quality, Adreno 330 GPU, Snapdragon 801 quad core. You're going to get some solid gameplay, solid graphics. A bit of slowdown here and there for whatever reason. LeBron, planks a three.
And Wade gets the rebound. Back to Chalmers. Back to James. Who isn't looking to pass to his teammates. Spins around. Spins around. Goes down into the post. Shoots it and gets blocked by Tim Duncan. Miami gets the inbounds. James in position. Inbounder passes to James. James steps back behind the three-point line. Shoots. And he misses. All right. Again, multitasking. Just click on the multitasking key. And you All right, let's look at one more game here. Crazy Taxi. We got Walking Dead as well, actually, if you guys want to see that here real quick. Really cool game. This is available in the Play Store. We did have an exclusive uh, about a month ago where we showcased it on Android phone, but it's available now in the Play Store. It's beautiful, beautiful graphics. You can download the other episodes here. Pay for them if you want. brightness. You can see the batteries died pretty quickly. I was at like I think 85% when I started, maybe even more. Now I'm at 73. So because it's extensive use, let's reject that. Just wait till it starts. This game is free in the Play Store, guys. Chapter one is free. I'll post a uh, separate video basically just showcasing games and comparisons with other phones. Great graphics. Great game. So we're getting angled on the game. Right, we're going to close out of this, guys. I'm not going to wait till this loads up and whatnot. So, again, you could just multitask, close it out. Of course, you have Crazy Taxi as well. Great Dreamcast game. These are all three, all three of these are very graphically intensive games. So, they're running perfectly fine in terms of frame rates on the Galaxy S5. guys already haven't subscribe to the channel we have some great content coming up as well as a contest to win an HTC M8 coming this summer so stay tuned for that guys let's go make some crazy money loads pretty quickly well, we're gonna just play this real quickly here a few seconds maybe I mean, look how far we've come with phones where you can play Dreamcast games without a hitch, right? Pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Pretty proud of that, you know? The fan of technology. That's a crazy taxi. Go home here. Let's go ahead and run the quadrant. We'll get this thing wrapped up here. Now, not everyone swears by benchmarks. Um, some people really couldn't care less. I personally don't swear by these things, but um, a lot of people do want to see benchmarks, so I'm going to go ahead and post this quadrant, and 2 I'm assuming it's about a 40 to 40 something thousand. Now, development on this phone. Of course, given that it's the flagship Samsung Galaxy, this thing's going to have a superb amount of development. Whether you want to install CyanogenMod, go with stock Android, or whether you want to install uh, custom tweaked uh, ROMs of TouchWiz, they will be available if they already aren't. So check out XDA, some great development for this phone because it's such a popular phone. So there's no doubt in my mind that you will have a solid um, develop, developer experience with this device. Let's go ahead and click yes. See what kind of quadrant scores we get. 2405, okay. Now the HTC M8, I was able to get about 23,000. So I'm sure if I ran this again, I would probably get somewhere in that range. All right, so 2405, that's a pretty damn good score as far as I'm concerned, guys. All right, so, you know, I've basically covered everything I've wanted to cover here. I'm sure there's certain things that I've missed, I, you know, usually do, but I've gone on for almost actually more than 40 minutes here. So this is a truly in-depth review, guys. Of course, Flipboard and all those other apps are here as well. Um, if you guys have any questions or concerns about the Galaxy S5, please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I am Baird. You have watched Technability, your source 
for no-nonsense tech. Uh, we do have some great comparisons coming up, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, please, guys, subscribe to the channel. Continue supporting us. Uh, don't forget to check out. Excuse me. Don't forget to check out all our other content that we have on the channel. Uh, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, Google Plus, all that good stuff. And stay tuned for our contest this summer to win an HTC M8. Again, I am Berge. This is the Samsung Galaxy S5 running on T-Mobile's network. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a very good weekend.